We'll go ahead and get started. I will now call to order the meeting of the Omaha Planning Board. The Planning Board members that are here today are Sidney Franklin, Jeff Moore, Patrick Morris, Jorge Sotolongo, Dave Rosacker, Vice Chair, and I'm Greg Rosenbaum, Chairman. Members of the city staff that are in attendance today are Dave Fanslau, Planning Director, Eric Eng Englund, Assistant Planning Director, Mike Carter, Current Planning Manager, Robert LaRocco, Planning Board Administrator, Jennifer Taylor of the City Law Department, and Lisa Agins is our Recording Secretary. Our rules of procedure are as follows. Notice of this hearing has been published. Copies of today's agenda are located on the table in front of us. You are welcome to come down and pick one up. The cases on the consent agenda will be heard first. Consent cases have been recommended for layover approval, have already been heard or perceived by the Planning Board to be non-controversial, therefore will be read and voted on without the opportunity for your testimony. If you wish to testify, you may remove the case from the consent agenda. When each consent case is read, I will ask if anyone wants the case removed. If you do, please stand up and say so and the case will be removed. This case will then be heard in the order in which it appears on the regular agenda after we go through the consent cases. When the case is heard, you'll have the opportunity to come to the podium, clearly state your name and address, and give your testimony at that time. When hearing cases on the regular agenda, the board will first hear from the applicant. After the applicant states their case, we will hear from the proponents, and then we will hear from the opponents. After both sides are heard, the public hearing will be closed and no additional testimony will be permitted unless a board member requests additional information. When at the podium, please clearly state your name, address, and whom you are representing for the record. Your testimony is very important to us. In the interest of time and courtesy to others, please be short and to the point. We will try to limit each case to 10 minutes. Those directly involved in the case, please speak first. We request that large groups select a spokesperson to represent that group, therefore eliminating repetitive testimony. When giving, when giving testimony, please provide new information and try not to repeat what has been previously said. We do ask that all speakers and others be treated with courtesy and respect. In that regard, please Remain silent while seated, and please turn off your cell phones. Our decision to approve, deny, or continue a case made here today will be forwarded to the City Council for another public hearing and final disposition by the City Council. Conditional use permits are an exception to this rule. The Board's decision made here today on conditional use permits are final and not forwarded to the City Council. Lastly, upon the advice of the Law Department, all communications to the board members from attorneys or other interested parties should be transmitted through the Planning Department so that they are made a part of the public record. The Department will then transmit all that information to the board as well as to the rest of the public. A current copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act can be found in a white binder in this room. And there are no changes to the consent agenda, so I will start with the reading of the consent cases. Agenda item number three, case C321-126, applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha. It is on for approval. Request approval of amendment to the chapter 55 to chapter 55 regarding typographical errors, location, city of Omaha, and the three mile extra territorial zoning jurisdiction. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay. Agenda item number six, case C10-19-6, C12-19-7. Applicant A1 development, it is on for approval. Request revised preliminary plat and final plat approval of Lake Cunningham Village, lots 169 through 252, outlots M through R, a cluster subdivision outside the city limits with rezoning from DR to R5. Location, southeast of 96 and State Streets. Anyone wish to have this removed? 
Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number eight, case C10-21-165, C12-21-166. Applicant, Ross Pearson. It is on for layover. Request, preliminary plat approval of F Street Crossing, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to DR, R4, and MU. Location, southeast of 204th and F Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Did I say it was on for layover? Yes. Okay. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number nine, case C3-21-167, C10-18-219, C12-18-220, Applicant Falcone Land Development. It is on for approval. Request pre preliminary plat approval of Estancia lots 524 through 680, outlots M through W, a subdivision outside the city limits with waivers to section 5382B cul de sac length, 53914 green corners, and 5383 block length, along with a waiver of the PDZ present development zone boundary and a rezoning from AG to DR and R4. Location, northeast of 216th and 4th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? You do, sir? Okay. That was agenda item number nine, will be removed. Continuing on, agenda item number 10, case C3-21-168, C10-21-169, C12-21-170. Applicant, BSR FW LLC. It is on for approval. Request, preliminary plat approval of Daybreak, a subdivision outside the city limits with the waiver of the PDZ present development zone boundary, along with rezoning from AG to DR and R4. Location, north of 192nd and 4th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 12, case C10-21-174, applicant John and Mary Kosis. It is on for approval. Request, rezoning from DR to R4, location 5725 South 56th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 13, case C10-21-175, applicant Timothy Kinkle. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from R435 to R5, location 9239 Ohio Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 14, case C10-21-176. Applicant, Thompson, Dreesen, and Dorner, Incorporated. It is on for approval. Request, rezoning from R2 to R4. Location, 13303 Potwin Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 16, case C10-2-161. Applicant, Westgate Bank. It is on for approval. Request, Approval of a major amendment to the mixed-use de district development agreement for Thompson Mile West. Location, 17617 Manderson Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 17, case C9-21-173. Applicant, Nebraska Urban Indian Health Coalition, Incorporated. It is on for approval. Request. Approval of a PK parking overlay district, location 2208 N Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 18, case C10-21-181. Applicant Thompson, Dreesen, and Dorner, Dorner, Inc. It is on for approval. Request approval of the MCC Major Commercial Corridor Overlay District, location 3820 and 3808 North 90th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? 
ain't seen none. Agenda item number 19, case C10-21-182, applicant F&J Enterprises Incorporated. It is on for approval. Request approval of the ACI 4PL Area of Civic Importance Overlay District. Location, 5906 Abbott Drive. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 23, case C10-21-191. Applicant Adrian Suarez, it is on for approval. Request approval of the MCC Major Commercial Corridor Overlay District. Location, 3352 North 108th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 24, case C8-21-185, applicant Jeff Anderson. It is on for approval. Request approval of a special use permit to allow small group living disabled in the R435 district within 600 feet of an existing small group living use. Location, 6337 North 30, 33rd Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Yes, sir, we'll remove that. Moving on, agenda item number 26, case C8-21-187, applicant American Ta Tower Delaware Corporation. It is on for approval. Request approval of a special use permit to allow a broadcast tower in the DR district with a waiver of section 55506 height to allow a 100, 195 foot temporary monopole. Location, 11805 Military Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 27, case C8-20-259. Applicant Brad Louth it is on for approval. Request, approval of a special use permit to allow construction sales and service in the CC district pending. Property is located within the flood fringe overlay district. Location, northwest of Rose Blumpkin Drive and Harney Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 28, case C7-21-188. Applicant, Don Gardner. It is on for approval. Request, approval of a conditional use permit to allow surface parking in the NBD district. Location, southeast of 206th Street and Elkhorn Drive. Anyone wish to have this removed? Hey, what? Somebody did? The address of uh, case 28, uh, location southeast of 206th Street and Elkhorn Drive. Okay. Okay, continuing on, case 30, I mean, I'm sorry, agenda item 30, case C7-19-154, applicant, Douglas County School District, 001, care of Darwin Road. It is on for approval, Appro uh, request, approval of a major amendment to a conditional use permit to allow secondary educational facilities in the R5 district. Location, northwest of 156th, and Ida Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Okay. Seeing none, agenda item number 31, case C7-21-189. Applicant, Eugene Erickson, it is on for approval. Request, approval of a major amendment to the conditional use permit assumed to allow religious assembly in the R5 district. Property is located in a MCC major commercial corridor overlay district. Location, 201 North 90th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, those are the consent cases. Do we have a motion from the board for the consent cases for approval? Motion to approve uh, case numbers three, six, 10, uh, 12, 
13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 23, 26, 27, 28, 30, and 31. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Do we have a motion for the consent cases on for layover? Motion to layover um, agenda item number eight. Second. I have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Those consent cases that were just voted on, no further action will be taken today. If you were here for one of those cases, you are welcome to stay and you are welcome to uh, leave if, if you so choose. <laughs> the first two cases are administrative only, therefore there won't be the opportunity for public testimony. Agenda item number one is case C10-21-101 C12-21-102, Applicant Celebrity Homes, Omaha. Request, final plat approval of Majestic 178, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to R4, location southeast of 177th and State Streets. Eric. Yeah, so uh, this final plat um, follows the preliminary plat, which was before this body on uh, the May meeting and then approved by City Council on June 29th. Uh, the final plat is nearly identical to the approved preliminary plat. It includes 204 single family residential lots, eight out lots within 55 acres. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to R4, approval of the final plat of Majestic 178 subject to submittal of an acceptable subdivision agreement prior to City Council. Any comments or questions? Do we have a motion? Move for the approval of the rezoning from AG to R4, approval of the final plan of Majestic 178 subject to submittal of an acceptable subdivision agreement prior to the time. Order to move for second, please. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item number two, case C10-21-47, C12-21-48. Applicant, Woodsonia 168 State LLC, request final plat approval of the Hill, lots one through 173, out lots A through D, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to DR and R4. This was laid over from our June meeting location northeast of 168 and State Street. Eric. Yeah, so the preliminary plat was uh, recommended for approval um, by Planning Board back in March and then approved by City Council on May 4th. Um, as you had mentioned, it was laid over at last month's meeting, which included 158 single-family lots. Um, the, the scope has expanded to include 173 single-family residential lots and four out lots. This is the first phase. Um, final plat. There are a few items that will still need uh, to be addressed prior to City Council. Uh, one of those being um, the need for a connection street between Davidson and Willett Street uh, to provide some additional connectivity for the lots on the southern portion of the site. Um, that will need to be added to the final plat mylars before proceeding to City Council. Um, other than that, um, I don't have anything else to uh, that I feel I need to point out. So staff recommends approval of the rezoning from AG to DR and R4, approval of the final plat subject to the two conditions prior to forwarding to, uh, the request to City Council. Any comments or questions from the board? Do we have a motion? I motion for approval of the rezoning from AG to DR and R4 and approval of the final plat subject to meeting the two conditions in the recommendation report prior to forwarding the request to City Council. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, we're going to take agenda items number four and 32 together. 
Agenda item number four is case C3-21-160, applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha request approval of the East Side North 18 Ohio TIF redevelopment project plan. Location, northeast of 18th and Ohio streets. And agenda item number 32, case C14-21-190, applicant planning, planning board on behalf of the city of Omaha, <coughs> request vacation of the alley east of 18th Street between Corby and Ohio Streets. And Don, you're presenting. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning on behalf of the project. This is an affordable housing uh, project being developed by Holy Name Housing. We're asking for assistance to the tax increment financing program. Uh, the site's located in the area of 18th and Ohio Streets an assemblage of 11 vacant lots. They'll be developing um, 13, let me turn it this way. Developing uh, 13 bungalow style rental units, um, having a row home development. The units, 13 units will be arranged in three row house structures. Uh, the project has LIHTC funding, that's low-income housing tax credits, both federal and state um, tax credits. Uh, so the rental units are for income-qualified households. Uh, the project also has $247,000 in home funds, that's HUD funds that are being passed through the city, so from the city to the project. Uh, developers Holy Name Housing Corporation, uh, CEO is Matthew Cavanaugh. Total project investment in the neighborhood is about $4.1 million or so. They are requesting $310,000 in TIF support. The project uh, meets the required criteria of a city's TIF program. It's an appropriate land use for the location, and it complies with the city's master plan. And we are asking for your approval. Okay. Thank you, Don. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Name and address, please. Good afternoon. I'm Matthew Cavanaugh, 4324 Fort Street. I'm executive director of Holy Name Housing Corporation. Uh, we're excited about this project. I'm just here to answer any questions if you have any. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Comments, questions from the board? Eric? Yes. Yeah, so I'll speak um, for agenda item 32. There is um, a planning board initiated alley vacation um, that goes through this site. Um, the board had previously um, seen plat PUR disposal of city property um, in the past year or two on this site. Originally, the, um, the existing residence on the corner of the intersection was to be included in the plat. Um, we have been unable to move forward with that property owner's signature, so we had to um, modify the vacation um, right-of-way process away from that plat and, and do this planning board initiated. So all of the vacated alley will go towards Holy Name Housing, um, and we are in full support of this method. So we'll have to take the two items separately. So for specifically for item, agenda item number four, staff recommends approval. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion approved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, for agenda item 32, did you want to add anything? Else? I do, yes. Staff recommends approval subject to retaining utility, drainage, easements if necessary. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion for approval subject to retaining utility, drainage, easements. We have a motion and a second, Lisa. Will you please record the vote? Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Moving on, agenda item number five, case C3-21-161. Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha request approval of the East Side 1620 Clark TIF Redevelopment Project Plan. Location 1620 Clark Street. <coughs> Don? 
Uh, yeah, Don Seaton once again uh, for the City Planning Department. Um, this one is related to the other project that I just presented. They're actually both developments part of one larger project, 25 units in all, but they have been separated into two separate TIF projects based primarily on the geography. This is the one we just reviewed um, on Ohio Street. This is the one I am presenting now at um, 1620 Clark Street. Um, again, it is um, an affordable housing development being undertaken by Holy Name Housing. It's on a single parcel, vacant parcel, of approximately 0.8 acres. Uh, this one will have 12 bungalow style rental units. They will be arranged in um, two row house structures. And again, it's a LIHTC funded project, low income housing tax credits. Two structures, sign of the row homes. Um, LIHTC project with federal and state housing tax credits. Um, and they're also receiving $228,000 in home funds from the city of Omaha. Um, the developer, like I said, is Holy Name, CEO Matthew Cavanaugh. Uh, the total project cost for this development is $3,818,000 or so. They're requesting $310,000 in TIF support. And again, the project uh, meets the required criteria of the city's TIF program. It's an appropriate land use for the location, complies with the city's um, master plan. We ask for your approval. Okay. Thank you, Don. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Additional comments, questions from the board? Eric, did you want to add? You've seen uh, previous zoning items on this site, PUR, plat rezoning, uh, disposal of city property. Uh, so um, all of our items have been um, incorporated into those um, approvals. For this item, staff recommends approval. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. We're going to take agenda items number 7 and 21 together. Agenda item number 7, case C10-21-162, C12-21-163, applicant Redwood USA LLC, request preliminary plat approval of Redwood Winninghoff, a subdivision outside city limits along with rezoning from R4 to R6. Location, northeast of Sorensen Parkway and Winninghoff Road. And agenda item number 21, case C11-21-164, applicant, Redwood USA LLC, request approval of a PUD plan unit development overlay district. Location, northeast of Sorensen Parkway and Winninghoff Road. May we hear from the applicant, please? Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Paul DeCrype, and I'm with Redwood, uh, 7007 East Pleasant Valley Road, Independence, Ohio. I'm joined this afternoon by um, Rob Vanderby with Lamprey Nearson, and on behalf of both of our firms, I'd like to thank staff for all their help thus far and your time and consideration of our proposal. Um, because we're this is our first time presenting uh, a project. I wanna take just a moment and talk a little bit about Redwood in the only way that I know how, uh, and that's openly and honestly. And you'll see that that's core value for Redwood uh, number five of eight. Uh, these eight core values are not just simply words to me and my colleagues, but they're a pathway and a, a, a business plan to success. And we've successfully been doing one thing well, which is core value number one, and that's the development of two bedroom, two bath, two car garage, single story attached townhome rentals since we were founded in 1991 uh, by Steve Kimmelman, who started out with a few simple goals, and that's to create stressless, remarkable apartment homes, as well as Steve wanted to control the whole process from start to finish, so development all the way through long-term management. Um, to date, we have over 13,000 units, and we've never sold one. That's in part because we're developing, a or we're building a company and not just developing a project. 
This is our portfolio today. All of what we do, do does not happen by accident. There's over 400 practitioners and professionals at Redwood, as including one manager and one maintenance manager at each uh, community. Uh, often they live at the project. It's that unique design, uh, both in terms of the layout of the project, as well as um, the design of the units themselves that allow us to manage like no other. Um, we have rules and regulations at the property that everyone must follow, which are in addition, or which are very different than what you'd see at maybe even just an HOA or a, a single family home subdivision. Uh, everybody goes through a criminal and credit background check, uh, no felons. So who are our residents? This is important to us. They're uh, empty nesters, young professionals who want, uh, those who want a single story design, those who want peace and quiet, those who want to get out and experience all that Omaha has to offer without being tied to the annual maintenance and upkeep. And again, it's that unique design that attracts long-term residents. Digging in, I'm not gonna go through everything here. You can see it, uh, but our average age of our resident and our portfolio of 13,000 units is almost 51 years old. 70% are empty nesters and most relocate from a three mile radius. 12% uh, of our residents stay for more than five years. These are our exteriors of our buildings. A um, couple things I wanted to kind of point out to you is uh, each home gets a patio 10 by 10. Um, you can visit any one of our communities uh, in our portfolio, uh, whether it's 12 months old or 12 years old. And the only thing you're really gonna see is this, to note the difference is the size of the tree. Otherwise, we're very consistently maintained. Interior, on this uh, slide, I just wanna point out really on the right-hand slide, uh, that pretty picture, that decoration, the uh, nice pillows, the lamp, really not any of that I wanted to point out. Uh, it's the window, and not necessarily the window, it's the view you get outside the window. Uh, we're very different, we're very unique. Um, nothing like a traditional apartment building, looks more like a home, that's the view you get outside. Uh, we have some photos of interiors at the end of our presentation. Um, here's our, our floor plans. Our smallest unit is 13,000 feet, or just under 13,000 feet. Our largest unit is just over 16,000, uh, 1,600 square feet. Um, <laughs> not that big. Um, uh, some of the amenities that I wanted to point out here is um, a walk-in kitchen pantry. You just don't get that in some homes, let alone uh, a rental product. I'll have a, a bonus room, uh, full-size washer and dryer hookups, zero grade entrances and lever door handles. Um, those are very uh, uh, well thought, uh, well, re well received by our empty nester population. Here's our other um, unit types. This is the site. It's a, currently a vacant site. Um, the current zone, or it, it, it's, uh, the, the current site allows for a much more intense use. We like what we are, we are proposing. Um, this is our, our proposal. Um, I wanted to just uh, st uh, state now before we get into the, the site plan a little bit. Um, we had a neighborhood meeting about a week and a half ago um, and had a few questions. Um, and I just wanted to review those you know, briefly. Uh, up in the upper right hand corner, there was a, a question about the trees. Um, and it, as it turns out, um, all of those trees um, are not on our property. They're actually on the city's property. So uh, we clarified that and let uh, our new neighbors know that we wouldn't be touching those. Um, with one minor exception, we're gonna create a connective path um, as, as we've discussed with the city. Uh, so there may be a few trees that come down. Uh, with respect to that, that connectivity. Um, we also had a, a question about that path of who's maintaining it. And we clarified that we will be doing that uh, as part of um, our application. And then um, all the way over on the left-hand side, upper left, uh, four houses in, there was one of our neighbors who asked about a tree that was right on the property line. So last week I, I flew out and um, drove specifically out there, took some pictures talk to our engineer, and in fact, we're not gonna to touch those trees. So we're happy to say that we're gonna leave those alone. Um, in terms of our site plan, um, our development was, uh, 
was our development design was driven in part by the need to create that connectivity between 84th Street uh, to the north and Winninghoff Road via Whitmore Street. Um, I believe item 22 on the agenda, uh, we're, we're going to need to move that street over a little bit, so we're working with staff on that. Um, these are the only city streets. The rest of the roads within this development are all private, privately owned, privately built, and privately maintained. And they all have 12 mile an hour uh, posted speed limits. Um, in the, uh, let me do this here. Uh, we have a leasing center. I'll go there, right over here. Uh, in that top corner, I'll do that again. Do you want to there. point to it on your map also? Oh, sure. Right in here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is just a quick analysis of our site. 25 acres, unit counts, density, 31 buildings, two covered, two, two uh, driveway spots. Um, our uh, proposed starting rents for our smallest unit is $1,700. And as you can see on the site analysis, that we meet uh, height, width, and depth, uh, as well as lot coverage. On this slide, I, this is a schematic of our landscaping. All I wanted to do was point out the abundance of trees here. Our plan calls for 229 trees. This is a parking study. I don't know how if you can see that too well, um, but this is a sample from our portfolio. We, we do analysis on our own data. Um, this is trip generations from three properties um, in the 100 to 150 unit range, uh, trips uh, in 2010, and then a similar subset for 2019. You can see the very low impact for AM and PM peak. Some photos of our interior units. I just wanted to point out here the transom windows over the slider, the pendant lights, again, granite countertops, high-end appliance finishes, uh, and vinyl plank flooring in our bathroom. Um, some of our uh, bathrooms have double bowl vanities, walk-in showers, again, for our empty nester clientele, as well as that bowed shower curtain. On this particular unit, off to the left right over here, um, you can see the walk-in closet and uh, master bath. Here, uh, we do get a, a few questions from time to time. So I'm moving out of a house. Where do I put all my stuff? We've done an analysis to show people how much space they have. And here are our floor plans. And that's the extra space that you have, both in the garage and in the, uh, um, in the closets. None of, none, of the, none of that calculation is uh, including the kitchen cabinets. And this is it. So uh, this is our, our uh, and some images of our exteriors in our private streets. With that, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Bob. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Uh, Rob Vanderveen, I'm with Lamper Nearson, 14710 West Dodge Road, Suite 100. Um, like Paul said, we're the civil engineers um, uh, for this project, so here to help answer any questions along with Paul. Okay, thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, close, I'll close the public hearing. Comments, questions from the board? Eric. Yeah, so um, obviously Paul went through a very detailed <coughs> description, so I'll just touch on a few relevant items uh, for the two reports. <coughs> Um, as he mentioned, we uh, do have a condition to move uh, Whitmore Street as it connects um, 84th Street to Winninghoff Road um, slightly to the north so it lines with future development on the west. Um, there are extreme grades, um, so a vehicular connection is um, not being required for the 82nd, 82nd Avenue, but we are uh, providing that uh, sidewalk or trail that was uh, mentioned by Paul as well, which will have an appropriate easement. Specifically for the PUD item, which is number 21, um, there are a few items, a uh, few setbacks of buildings, buffer yard requirements that will need to be um, uh, modified slightly. And due to the moving of, the, of that Whitmore Street further to the north, we think it's best to lay over uh, the PUD component to allow for um, the changes in the plat and that street alignment so that we know what we're working with. 
Um, this layover of the PUD will not slow down the project. The preliminary plat would continue to city council, and when the final plat comes forward, the PUD would not accompany, um, would not go to city council until the final plat anyway. So a layover um, does not hurt the timeline, um, but I think it's the appropriate thing to do. So unless there's any specific questions, we'll take these two items separately. Um, for number seven, staff recommends approval of the rezoning from R4 to R6 in conjunction with an acceptable PUD plan and approval of the preliminary plat subject to the um, 17 conditions in the recommendation report. That is one that we handed out uh, separately, so you're aware. So 17 conditions. Okay. Do we have a motion? from R4 to R6 in conjunction with the acceptable PUD plan and approval of the preliminary plat subject to the following 17 conditions. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Then for consent, or consent item number 21, um, I guess I didn't point out that there is the PUD, which is the more restrictive of the R5 and R6 um, requirements, and it follows the low density um, that is laid out in the master plan. And for those mentioned, or for those items I just mentioned, staff is recommending layover. Okay, do we have a motion? Motion to layover. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, are you please record the vote. Morris? Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay. Agenda item number nine was taken off of consent. It is case C3-21-167, C10-18-219, and C10-21-168. Applicant, Falcone Land Development, request preliminary plat approval of Estancia lots 524 through 680, outlots M through W, a subdivision outside the city limits with waivers to section to sections 5382B cul-de-sac length, 53914 green corners, and 5383 block length, along with the wa with a waiver of the PDZ present development zone boundary and a rezoning from AG to DR and R4. Location northeast of 216th and Fort Streets, is a representative of, are you the applicant? Yeah, we'll hear from them first. The, oh, we'll hear from the applicant first. Oh, you wait for the yeah. applicant first. Sorry. Is, there a, is the applicant here? Okay. <clears throat> Kyle Hull, uh, Ian Aiken Solman Group, 10909 Mill Valley Road. Uh, I'm the engineer on the project. With me today also is Christian Kloster of Falcone Land Development. Uh, we're on the consent agenda, so we'll, we're happy to answer any questions or concerns. Uh, background this project's on the northeast corner of 216th and Fort Street. Uh, it's master planned with the, uh, our future NRD dam. That's why you see the large outlot uh, with the top of the dam elevation. That, that dam is currently in a 60% design status. Uh, so this development is a third phase of the Vistancia area. Um, and uh, again, happy to answer any other questions. Okay, thank you, Kyle. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? No, sir, you can come up. Give your name and address, please. Okay. I'm Randy Schrader. We originally sold the property to the Falcone Development Company, and uh, we retained five acres for we, our home and storage. We need your address? 6045 North 216th. Okay, and what did you say your, your name was? Randy Schrader. Okay. Thank you, Randy. And. I guess our concern is at on the proposal there is a road drawn in t on the north side of our property that um, actually is going to cause some privacy concerns. Uh, it's going to take several of our trees. Uh, my storage building, I think it's there's you know some grading that's set up that's very close to the storage building, so we have concerns about that grading to be done along with the drainage from that building. Um, you know, I, I think that there's probably gonna be some traffic concerns that need to be addressed before that's put in because there's 
the Mount Michael mm -hmm. Abbey, Mount Michael High School out there, and it's a two-lane road uh, with no apron on the side. Um, we get tons of bikers, bicycle riders on the weekends out there. And uh, with the way this road exits there, that there's going to be, you know, double, at least double the traffic out there. And so I think that really needs to be concerned. Um, I'm curious on how they would plan to acquire that property from me if approved. For one thing. And um, if approved, I wondered if we can propose that we make some berms in between the actual road and our property, along with landscaping in there to help cut down on the noise and uh, improve my privacy a little bit. So those are my concerns. Okay, thank you, Randy. Thank you. We'll ad we will address those concerns here shortly. Okay. Any other opponents wishing to speak? Hello, my name is Joshua Stringer at 5402 North 216th Street. Elkhorn. I have some concerns about this uh, initially myself too. Um, as we've had with the virus and everything, we've had different variants. You, have, you don't even know the future of the outcome and there's been stuff with like food shortages and increase in food and seeing agriculture go away and people defaulting and people uh, just not able to pay their bills. People even not working, a lot of new jobs for like low level workers and I'm just, I'm just kind of concerned about what could happen in the future if people start taking those homes and default and I don't know just I just have some general concerns I'm across the way from there too and privacy is a thing myself I enjoyed it for my family because it's rural and I've always kind of seen it as a rural place away now with all that development I'm probably gonna cross the street in about 10 years which I mean, you know I'm gonna have to probably even think about el elsewhere if that's the case uh, he, Mr. Schroeder uh, brought up some great concerns. There are a lot of bikers, people for dog, a lot of stuff. It's a dual uh, two-lane road, uh, no no passing, and no real sidewalk, no real pullover. If you're gonna kind of if you're gonna get pulled over, you're gonna kind of stay on the road unless you want to be kind of in a ditch. So, you know, uh, lots of trash. I've had people drag race on 216. Like every few weeks, I see people skid their tires and run. It just what's gonna happen when there's another couple hundred people there? I don't know, but uh, I know that I don't have any control over that land or anything, but uh, just seeing it from agriculture to that development, seeing the context of events of our situation with what we've been through and what we could be going through, it just seems like we need to slow down just a little bit, maybe kind of change it up, but well, I thank you for hearing my concerns. Okay, thank you, Joshua. Any other opponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Um, Kyle, did you want to come up and address yeah, Randy and uh, Joshua's concerns? So the, the, the connection on 216th, um, Mount Michael Drive, it is a, it's an existing half mile road to the west, and so we've lined up to connect with that existing half mile road. The new road going east is uh, Kansas. Um, I, can't believe, I can't remember if that's Kansas Drive or Kansas Street, but Kansas is the, the name of that street, it continues further to the east. The city's policy is, is um, to have a half mile through roadway connection. Uh, so, we, and we are lining up with that existing Mount Michael. The, the reason for the jog to the north in that roadway alignment uh, was to save the, uh, the existing uh, garage building that's there. Um, as far as the berming request, we, we can grade without, without taking that, uh, uh, that shed down. Um, you asked about the question for acquisition. This is an SID financed uh, uh, project, so the SID would have the ability to purchase right away for that for that roadway section. Um, that particular roadway is in a cut section, so the road would be below the existing grade. Uh, so, from a berming standpoint, um, I can look at seeing if berming would apply. I, I think with the road being six to eight feet below the the grade there. Um, it's going to be fairly hidden anyway, but certainly some screening would be a possibility. Um, 
see if I'm missing anything regarding questions there. Um, I would love to not build that road as well. That's extra cost. I just don't think that uh, that would is going to sit well with city staff <laughs> and, and the public works department. Uh, the other gentleman's uh, information or, or concerns regarding density and traffic um, with this project, uh, currently Fort Street to the south is a, is a gravel road section. Uh, this project provides funding, a funding mechanism that will be paving that road all the way up to uh, the existing 216th Street. Um, there also is, with this project, uh, um, funds for a turning, turning lane at Mount Michael Drive in Kansas uh, to improve that intersection. Um, the other question was, I guess, regarding pedestrian and, and bicyclist. With the NRD trail, there, there is a plan for uh, a recreational bike trail with the NRD dam. Uh, we'll have a connection interior through the neighborhood to connect to that uh, NRD facility. So uh, the, the one caveat there, just to be clear, that that dam has not received funding yet. Uh, so I think it's likely still, you know, 10 years out, most likely, uh, just full transparency there. Uh, but we're planning for it with this, with this subdivision. So uh, again, any other clarifications or questions? I could answer those two. Any questions or comments? Eric, did you want to add anything to uh, Andy and Josh's yeah, questions? Yeah, for the, yeah. the street connection to 216th Street, that is a requirement and um, a, a vital component of the master plan. Uh, we do have a condition that says acquire the property for Street 1 on its approach to 206th Street, 216th Street, either record a paper right-of-way dedication concurrently with the plat or include the full width of the right-of-way on the plat. Um, you know, there. Are, uh, since this was pulled off um, consent, I, I should mention a few items. There are a few Chapter 53 waivers included as far as cul-de-sac length, block length, and green corner uh, for varying reasons. Staff is supportive of those. It's obviously a unique site with the, the dam site on top of dam jutting out and that large outlot. So um, with that being said, there are um, going to have to be some detailed conversations with the applicant, city staff, and the NRD to finalize some items uh, just to make sure that uh, everybody's on the same page and, and getting all the requirements that are necessary. So that will need to occur between um, between now and before the or before the final plat comes forward. So uh, we'll have to work with the development team and the NRD in getting those meetings set up. I don't think I have anything else specifically to point out. If you have any questions for me, this does include a, a present development zone waiver um, that is being accounted for in the sewer construction that is occurring in this vicinity. So uh, that waiver is acceptable. Um, so unless there's questions, I have quite a few items here. It's approval of the waiver of the PDZ um, boundary, approval of the waiver to section 5382B cul-de-sac length, approval of the waiver to section 53914 green corners, approval of the waiver to section 5383 block length, approval of the rezoning from AG to DR and R4, approval of the preliminary plat subject to the 30 conditions in the recommendation report. If you so choose, you can make a recommendation um, based on the city staff recommendation report and not have to read all those. Okay, thank you, Eric. Do we have a motion? <laughs> Lisa, we have a motion and a second. Will you please record the vote? Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item number 11, case C10-21-171, C12-21-172. Applicant, First Management, Inc., request preliminary and final plat approval of Pacific Roads, a minor plat inside city limits, along with rezoning from R1 to R5, and approval of the MCC overlay district. Location, 9402. Pacific Street, and is the applicant present?
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Menkrecker. I'm with Earhart Griffin, 3552 Farnham Street. With me is Eric Weisler, the applicant and owner of the proposed development. I'm here to answer any questions. Um, you were at our pre-meeting upstairs, and you did mention that you that you have not had a meeting with any of the neighbors. No, Is sir. that correct? Not a formal meeting. We have not. Okay. When you say not a formal meeting, what, what's been your outreach to the neighbors? Uh, discussion with the church in regard to the fence. Okay. And that's the only discussion or, or meeting you've had? To my knowledge, yes. This is Eric Weisler. Hi, uh, Eric Weisler, 9217 Davenport Street. Uh, this lot is actually only has two neighbors. One is OPPD and, uh, and their easement uh, setback, and then uh, the uh, Sunset Hills Baptist Church. So uh, our discussions have been limited to both of those parties. The houses across the street to the south, are those within 300 foot on the south side of Pacific? Across Pacific Street? Yes. I you, believe they would be, yes. Yeah. Okay. And you have not met with anybody over there? We have not uh, fielded any phone calls or concerns, and we have not uh, discussed that with them. Thank you. The only reason I'm asking is that this board, for the all the years I've been on it, we've always been a stickler for a project like this meeting with the neighbors sure and it gives me great concern that you have not done that yet so. well with it not having an actual border with a, a property line with an actual with a with a resident i think that was our thought process but uh, we're happy to discuss this with anybody that has any concerns okay we'll, we'll move forward very good thank you uh any other proponents wishing to speak okay you're in favor of it sir with the conditions. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> My name is Ron Reed. I'm representing Sunset Hills Baptist Church at 9416 Pacific Street. My responsibility is uh, I'm the stewardship ministry leader for the church. I'm responsible for maintenance and care of the building and the grounds. Um, I've been in communication with Eric here uh, by email and I'd like to share my last email that I sent to him with you. Um, leadership in our ministry council is resolved about the need for safety and security for the Sunset Hills Church family. After communicating at length about the situation, we still believe there must be something to deter the temptation to use our open grass land. In the past, we have found use of our playground area by others outside of our church functions. There is another curb cutout east of our building on Pacific Street to prevent church overflow parking on our east lawn for weddings, funerals, and gatherings, meetings. Our large grassed area could be tempting for some to use for their use gatherings in different ways. Your point, uh, I had proposed a privacy, a privacy wall previously, and uh, Eric responded, uh, which I took into consideration and shared with our leadership. Your point of a privacy wall being unattractive is well taken. A privacy fence would block the view of your development. We would be in favor of a six foot tall black wrought iron fence to separate our properties. It would be an aesthetic solution to our agreeing with your, uh, with to your proposal going forward. It would help prevent your residents from feeling closed in as well. And that was the extent of our communication so far. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Any other proponents <laughs> wishing to speak? <laughs> Proponent? Okay. Seeing none, are there any opponents? I'm Ruth Ann Pop, my husband Ron Pop. We're at 9441 Shamrock Road. And we got a notice in the mail because our property is within 
the 300 feet limit. Um, we're right behind the church. Um, you know, I've spoken with some of the neighbors, including Bob and Carol Wilczewski, who are directly behind the church. And the neighborhood is against the rezoning from an R1 to an R5. And we very vehemently reject it because it would totally change the whole quality and tranquility of our neighborhood for, for us to go from a single family residential area with low density on large lots to going to an R5 where we're packing in a bunch of townhouses, you know, within 300 feet of um, our quiet neighborhood will definitely impact our tranquility. And I think it'll also properly impact our property value. The other thing we're really concerned about is in 1.99 acres, how many townhouses or duplexes are you really trying to shove in? That's not a lot of space. And Eric, I was trying to tell from the map is that 21 units 21. that's an awful lot of units to shove into 1.99 acres it makes me wonder about what kind of tenants we're going to get into is are these rentals they're for sale for sale makes me wonder what you know who's coming in to buy up this these townhomes the other thing that i'm really worried about um, because we've lived in this that home the home we're in for over 26 years is in the time that we've been there on 93rd and Pacific, we've always had trouble on Pacific Street with car accidents. Uh, the way the cars go down Pacific and then they stop to go northbound on 93rd. I mean, uh, hardly a week goes by when there's not a rear ending and a, a bad accident there. And then I'm thinking we're gonna have 21 units that are just slightly west of 93rd Street where people are gonna be slowing down on Pacific to turn into that small little congested area, the traffic there really, it's, it's a concern. I know it's a concern for the whole neighborhood. So. And the way that traffic runs is you can turn left or right on Pacific Street, which is kind of an, an anomaly these days, I think, that you can stop at 96 and Pacific and turn into Regency and stop the traffic for about a mile if you want to because you can't go left. And that ha same thing happens on 93rd Street and this development is right between those two intersections. And I'm sure if you look at the history of it, there's rear end after rear end after rear end. So there's really no way to uh, control the traffic uh, as it goes up and down in speed. And it does get up there to 40, 45 miles an hour on the street itself. I think a meeting with uh, the neighborhood people to explain what this is all about is definitely in order and it's not a small thing. Everybody we've talked to in our neighborhood has questions, but no, there have been no answers to this point. So I would say it's unanimous that no one wants a, a development like this that this close to them and to cause the safety concerns and things like that. But we're doing that based on kind of a blind leading the blind here. We, we don't know what it's all about. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Ron. Any other opponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Comments, questions from the board? No? Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, John or Eric, did either one of you want to come up and address some of the concerns of yeah, Ruth uh, and Ron. Eric Wiesler, 9217 Davenport. A couple things, we've worked really closely with the planning board on some of those concerns, public works in particular, um, uh, with it relating to density. Um, there's been several proposed projects on this lot in the past that I think have been kind of whittled down. Um, we've got what I think is a very uh, reasonable unit count. The layout works. This is a luxury product as well. I mean, we're targeting between five and $600,000 for these units. So when it uh, comes to property values, I think it, it will do nothing but help the area. Uh, it, but as far as the uh, traffic worries on Pacific Street, the 21 unit count was uh, essentially a compromise that uh, was discussed with the planning department and public works. Uh, we have their support on it and they've looked at those issues uh, that were brought up by Ron and Ruth Ann. Uh, by the way, Ron, uh, Ruth Ann, I'm happy to 
you know, meet with you or anybody else. This is the only objection I've ever heard of outside of uh, Ron, and, and we've been, I think you can attest that I've been very courteous and, uh, and happy to discuss anything that's of concern. Um, but uh, in general, um, I think uh, this site in its current condition is really a detriment to the neighborhood. It's a deteriorating house uh, before we bought it. Uh, it was kind of a rooming house with some transient people coming and going. Uh, it's uh, really in a sorry state right now. Uh, we're slating to demolish it uh, with the hopes that we could get your support so we can put something that's you know, worth, uh, worth developing on it because right now it's, uh, it's in a, uh, a really negative place in a negative state. So I'm looking to solve that problem. But uh, uh, to their point, uh, we have not discussed any of those details and I'm certainly open to, to doing so at any time. Uh, so with that said, those are my, my, my points. Okay. Thank you, Eric. You know, we did get quite a few letters about this and um, so there is, some, you know, quite a bit of concern. Um, I'm not necessarily against your project, but I'm just going to let you know I'm probably going to vote against this for today to lay it over in order to be a better effort to meet with the neighbors. Just my thoughts on this. But uh, any other comments or questions from the board before we hear from Eric? Eric. Yeah, so a couple thoughts. Um, you know, this area, it is a little challenging with this two-acre piece, and then you have the church property and then the OPPD property. Um, you know, ideally, these would not have direct access connections to Pacific Street. It's not how we would set things up if, if we were starting fresh. Um, you know, but, but obviously we... Um, you know, we have to work with what's given, and this site has only has frontage on Pacific Street, so it, it needs to have access to Pacific. Um, it is challenging because Pacific Street does not have a, a turn lane, as we discussed in the pre-meeting. Uh, there are multiple street connections, especially on the south side, that feed into Pacific as well. So there's a, there's a lot of conflict points. Um, yes, about three years ago, we did have some, the most recent submittals that were laid over a couple times at Planning Board. Uh, those are for differing differing reasons, um, P, PUR, PUD, um, dif different items. With the proposed one platted lot, um, alleviate some of those concerns that were were previously present. Um, the proposed rezoning to R5 is master plan compliant. The master plan lays out low density residential, basically R1 through uh, R5, and so. Um, the R5 is acceptable and compliant with the master plan. Uh, the proposed site area per unit is allowed to be uh, 3,000 square feet within the R5 district. Um, being proposed is a little over, um, or just I think it's a shade under 4,200 uh, per site area per unit. Um, there was a comment about a for sale product. The only option to that would, with the one platted lot would be a condo regime. So. I just wanted to point that out. I don't know. I, I don't recall. I haven't been involved in all the meetings or conversations with the developer, but uh, that would be the only um, for sale avenue, and the, the city is not involved in setting up that process. But as proposed, it's only one platted lot. So um, just wanted to mention that. Um, one other item the church parking should not be on grass. Just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, a Pacific Street is a major commercial corridor, so we are apl applying that overlay district with the rezoning that would bring in a higher design criteria regarding landscaping and building materials. Um, and then one item that would have to be finalized if this moves forward here um, today or in the future is we would need to finalize a, a tree mitigation plan and work with the developer on what trees are remaining on site and, and what's being kept and what, what it would be new tree planting. So um, we do have a recommendation of approval. If the board feels that it's necessary to lay over at this time, we respect that and, and we can continue to meet um, with any party that would like uh, to meet with the city. So staff recommends approval of the rezoning from R1 to R5, approval of the MCC overlay district, approval of the preliminary plat subject to the three conditions in the report, 
and approval of the final plat subject to submittal of a short form subdivision agreement prior to forwarding to city council. Eric, did you have something else you wanted to say? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, Eric Weisler, 9217 Davenport. Wanted to mention, uh, to your point, uh, we actually have taken great care and it's, it's very uh, personal to me to try and save the Grove-like feel of this lot. If you're familiar with it, it's uh, heavily forested in particular around the perimeter. And uh, we are going to use every effort to save every tree and John can attest to uh, my paranoia about this. Uh, probably not to his liking, honestly, but uh, <laughs> I think it's actually important to the product that we're trying to deliver here, and it will help in the in the sale of them. And to your point, yes, this will be a condo regime. We'll have an HOA for this little uh, little nook here. Uh, but as it, it as it comes to the landscape uh, and the existing uh, tree fauna, we're going to save as much as we can. We're going to add to it because I want this to be sort of an insular type of project in the sense that where you when you go in there you just feel like you're in your own little nook you're not in the middle of the city you know you I don't want them to uh, worry about OPPD or, or the the church I want this to be a, a nice green screen around this so any concerns the neighbors have as far as you know this type of product I think uh, are unfounded in the sense that uh, this is going to be a luxury product and we are going to take great care to create a uh, landscape barrier around this. Um, and then the only other comment I would have is that uh, I uh, am not trying to skirt any conversations with neighbors. I certainly have a long history of, of working with people well. Um, and uh, what I would suggest, I guess, at this stage is if, uh, if you do move forward and uh, will recommend approval on this, uh, that I would try and do uh, everything in my power to essentially meet with uh, everybody in the neighborhood and uh, and educate them on what we're doing. And if they still have concerns and objections, they can voice that at the city council hearing. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Um, go ahead, Sydney. I'm just curious if we were to follow your lead and, and uh, recommend a layover or, move, or approve a layover um, with the expectation that the owners or the developers meet with the, with the neighbors. I'm just curious what resolve can be reached if there's an expectation from the neighbors that the, the lot stay as low density as poss possible while they have these obligations to you know maximize the investment that, that they're creating. I'm just, I guess, wondering aloud what yeah. solution's going to be reached if, if, if they're not going to reduce this, the scope or size of the project and the and that's the real issue. I, I wasn't necessarily trying to lead the board. I was just giving my opinion of it. And over the, the years that I've been on it, and like I said, I'm not against this project. I, I just think the point that uh, Ron, correct? Yeah, the point that Ron made that we're kind of going ahead blindly and more information <laughs> needs to go out. And this board's always held applicants to that standard that uh, uh, at least make a, a bigger effort to meet with the I'm gonna, but I, I don't want to I'm not trying to that that's just my opinion you know I'm, I'm going to take a different attitude to that and I think or maybe it's in the middle if you will um, looking at this site it's in a way <laughs> it's a dinosaur because it's it's a, a type of, of property that worked in the past it does not work now it's been for sale and, and sitting there deteriorating for quite some time and so it's not a viable site for a single family anymore it's unlikely with the traffic on on Pacific Street that anybody's going to want to put a very nice home on that on that property as an acreage but what has come forward is something that's compliant with the with the code and something will work for us and it's a, it's a modest density, only 21 uh, <laughs> units versus something that could be put in there larger as a multifamily. And, and in my uh, mind, I think we should, uh, and I'm, this, isn't, this isn't a, a motion yet, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm thinking that we should uh, move this forward in total, but add another condition to it that uh, prior to meeting with the city council, that there are uh, public meetings with the neighbors that, uh, that they 
as a neighborhood, they can understand the, the scope of the project, the concepts that Eric's talking about as far as his vision for the, how that will contribute to the neighborhood and then be able to demonstrate that to, to the city council and then they can make their final determination on it. That would be my compromise. Okay. Any other comments? I would echo what, uh, what Dave had said. And um, I think this site is pretty well buffered as it is and I think it's a great luxury product for the neighborhood. I think it's going to be at uh, minimal um, interruption to the surrounding neighbors. So I would say as long as that communication happens, I'm also for moving forward. So just a comment, you could add a fourth condition to the preliminary plat um, that has a requirement to, to meet prior to city council. It just needs to be worded, um, tied down pretty good. Uh, the city doesn't want to play referee, whether it was an acceptable meeting or not. So, um, you know, it could be something that add condition for, um, you know, that the applicant set up a meeting and meet with the neighbors prior to forwarding to city council. Um, it, it's basically to hold a meeting, you couldn't condition that certain outcomes come of it or anything no. like that. No, I wouldn't do that. So well, I'll go ahead and make a motion then. Uh, sure. I have a motion for the approval of the rezoning from R1 to R5, approval of the MCC overlay district, approval of the preliminary plan, subject to the three conditions noted in the staff report with the addition of one more, that the applicant meet at least once with the neighborhood to give them the opportunity to, to field questions and he can give uh, a more complete description of the product that he's uh, proposing for the neighborhood. And then also for the approval of the final plat subject to the uh, short form subdivision agreement prior to forwarding request to city council. May I interrupt for a minute? <laughs> can I interrupt for a minute? You guys don't see me up here. I'm waving my hand. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. I That's didn't. okay. I'm just sitting up here. Don't worry about me. <laughs> might I, <clears throat> might I suggest that, since we send a notification to neighbors 300 feet out, that at least it includes those folks. Oh, absolutely. So, well, you didn't make that motion. I just wanted to throw that comment in. Yeah, if we could send that motion according, that's what was my underlying assumption. It'd be a 300 foot radius. Okay, that's an amendment to your motion. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. David. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Lisa, would you record the vote, please? Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Show you how much poll I have. No. <laughs> I'm going to vote no. Not that I'm against your project. I just think for consistency, we needed that, mo that meeting ahead of time. So. I'm voting no. Motion approved. Okay. I know it's a no. Hmm? I know it's a no. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, moving on. Agenda item number 15, case C10-21-180, applicant K7 unit construction LLC request rezoning from R3 to R5 location 7267 Pinckney Street. Is the applicant here? Yes, uh, good afternoon. My name is Alvin O'Karake, uh, 7914. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. There you go. 7914 West Dodge Road. I am the applicant, I am the owner of the property on Pinckney Street. I'm just going to go ahead and defer to the process here because I am aware of the feedback from the neighbors. I have reached out to quite a few of them, so I'm just going to just sit and sort of wait for questions. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alvin. Are there any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents wishing to speak? Nope. Okay, up oh, here we go. I was going to say with all the, all the letters, letters, I thought we'd have somebody down here. Hello, my name is Doug Lane, 7325 Pinckney Street, and I also own 7321 Pinckney Street as a vacant lot. Um, just to keep 
lots of space between myself and neighbors, and that's the attraction of the neighborhood. Uh, we all own approximately three quarter acre lots or bigger. And so if you own three quarters of an acre and your neighbor owns three quarters of an acre, it gives you a little elbow room. Um, many of us have detached garages as well. Um, and that was the attraction to build in the neighborhood in the first place. Uh, just west of the proposed site um, are three newer homes, or excuse me, four newer homes, newer as in the last 20, 25 years. Uh, the house that uh, was just taken down on this site was closer to 100 years old. Um, anyway, uh, and I appreciate Alvin did come around and knock on my door and, and speak to me regarding his plans for the property. Uh, that I appreciate, don't really appreciate. He mentioned it was going to be two townhomes and then I find out later that he told the neighbors four, so I don't know if he's proposing four, hoping to get two, I don't know. But even at two, I thought, gee, that's an awfully small lot. That lot is half the size of my, my single lot. Uh, I'm zoned R1, and, and the properties all around him are zoned R1. here and he's R3 those two lot and next door to him is I can't think of the name of the it's like a drug rehab thing or something I'm, I can't think of the name of the company or whatever that's operating there but so he's R1 right next to him here these are all R1 with 25 foot side yard setbacks um, nice newer homes newer again as in wouldn't be new if it was a car, but if it was a house, it's newer, 25 years old, 20 to, 20 to 25 years old, right in that range. Um, anyway, you can see he's half the size of these lots, uh, hence that's why this is probably zoned R3, uh, but he wants to jump up two notches to R5 and put four units in this small space, which would only allow According to his plans, one car in the driveway. Um, I don't know who has one car anymore, but not very many, I don't think. So that that seems like a problem. Uh, and parking on the street. Um, if you park on the street on the north side of the street, you have, and then you're heading west on that street, you can't see the cars heading east on the street it's problematic, I guess. It's kind of a blind hill right there. Anyway, so that would be a challenge, I think. But um, especially with, yeah, presumably eight cars for four units, that would be reasonable to think you would have eight cars. So um, he had also told me that these units would be sold but as townhomes, I don't believe they can be sold without um, creating four legal descriptions, hence four lots. Uh, and that is not what I'm hearing he's planning on doing. It's going to be one lot. So if it's one lot, um, yeah, I don't know. And you'd have to switch it over to condo association. I don't know. It just seems complicated to a four a four unit condo association economies of scale would be hard to manage I don't know uh, how would yeah I just don't see how that would work I don't I don't see that working well so uh, I would like to see him build a single family unit there uh, he wants to make it five bedroom or whatever or two bedroom whatever he wants to do that's fine but it's zoned R3 and we bought in that neighborhood based on the premise that this is what you should expect and we should be protected by the current zoning that's in place. That's most of what I have, I guess. All right. So I guess one add to that, 
he may have trouble building what he wants to build. There's a private water line that cuts across the property. And there's a 1922 easement recorded for that wa private water line as well. Um, so how you'd work that out, I'm not sure. So it feeds, it feeds another house to the, to the south of him. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Any other opponents wishing to speak? Hello. Um, good afternoon. I'm, my name is Mary Van Sant. I live at 7328 Pinckney, and I've lived in my house for almost 24 years. I don't know where the time's gone. Huh. But I moved into Keystone. It is a beautiful neighborhood. With We have big lots. I have just under an acre. Um, I just hate to see it, uh, you know, a building with several units move in. I'm worried about the traffic. Uh, as Doug mentioned, cars go flying over that top of that hill right where this is being proposed. So I don't know. I'm just here because I, I love my neighborhood and I'd like to see it stay the way it is. I want to say something really corny. Can we honor the, uh, the previous uh, visions of the planning board back in the 1930s when they divided the lots in Keystone? Because it, it really is I, a nice area. I invite you, if you haven't ever driven up Pinckney Street from 72nd, it's unbelievable. You're away from uh, all the commercial business traffic of 72nd. I bought my house from a couple that lived there almost 50 years. And um, I know a lot of history about the neighborhood, too, if you'd like to learn any. But thank you for hearing me out. Great. Thanks, Mary. Any other opponents? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Comments or questions? Yeah, I will. Any comments or questions? Okay, Elvin, yes. come on. Great. Come on. Yeah, I got a question for you before you. Yes. Come on up. Absolutely. Give your name and address again, yeah. Elvin. Elvin O'Carrie K, 7914 West Dodge Road. You did not have a formal public meeting, but you went around knocking on doors. Correct. Uh, to everybody within 300 feet of you? Yes, most most of them, correct. Okay. Most, I, I certainly I certainly approached everyone directly in all four directions or basically in a 360 degree proximity to this property and try to go further out depending on what I thought or what my estimations were to 300 feet. Um, and some that were out, outside, Frank, and I thought Doug, Doug Lane was actually outside of that 300 feet, but I did approach him because, of course, he, he frankly, he is a, the owner of a pretty prominent property in that area. So mm -hmm. certainly I thought uh, it, was, it was worth approaching him. Approximately how many doors did you knock on? Oh, geez. Um, Just easily, um, probably, easily 15, perhaps. Oh, okay. So um, you went to quite a bit of effort. Yes, and, and frankly, there were some people who did not, of course, uh, answer due to not being home. A couple that I believe were at home but didn't answer, which they certainly, it's their prerogative. Um, yes, I, and, and I would like to touch on a few things. One thing, okay. for, for the record, um, and, and no allegations of lying by any means, but I, I did not say two, I actually did say four, and I approached everyone with the exact imagery that was sent to everyone ignore my notes there um, so so this is what I approached every neighbor with knowing of course that this is what I settled on and this is what will go out from the city on my behalf um, I'd like to touch on a lot of things frankly the decades-old property the large lot property the traffic in the neighborhood I own a home <clears throat> that's approximately four acres I understand the elbow room topic um, it's the same exact plat as it was in the 1800s everyone else around it has been carved up into bits and pieces so literally I own a property that's as large as it was when it was originally platted three generations plus 
bought it from the granddaughter and her husband. I plan to keep it for as long as possible. I have thoughts of developing. I've actually approached the city about developing. So another conversation that comes up is, would you do this in your backyard? I absolutely would. I am considering it. Um, we're on an unimproved road. People come flying down 40 miles an hour, and this road is so crowned from decades probably of being gravel. Um, so if people don't care, paved or not, and we have to deal with it, so do my neighbors. Um, I, upon purchasing, it did approach my neighbors to discuss improvement of that street, even though I would foot the bill for a large chunk of it. So again, I believe I'm sort of putting my money where my mouth is. Um, you know, I, I wrote a couple things here. Yeah, large lot, 100 year old home. Uh, speed and traffic, again, traffic is a big deal. Actually cutting across my property is another proposal that the city's making, which obviously would be to my detriment, but it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to explore. Um, water line and the, you know, as far as the easement, that's very much understood. And um, there is gonna be a great deal of surveying, any engineering drawings that we're gonna further um, look into and, and certainly will be done as, as this process progresses. Um, and if it means you know, addressing that, it certainly will be addressed. It certainly can be amended. And um, frankly, a lot of letters that came, I should say, because I don't know how many did, a handful of those letters, I'm sure, were neighbors who I spoke with and seemed okay and changed their minds. And I'm privy to that because I actually spoke with the Keystone, Pres Keystone Task Force president for just about three hours and 30 minutes to yesterday. And how much came out of that conversation was frankly very heartening because issues that are brought up based on incorrect information, incomplete information, or just lack of information was very much apparent. I thought I had done my best to address these issues, but it was clear again in that conversation that wasn't the case. I actually came out pretty pretty good on that conversation or feeling pretty good because she finally understood what the misconceptions were, the sentiments that certainly drive the 300 foot notice, the public hearing, all these things that being a good neighbor is about, we, we touched on. And um, there, there was an, an emotional part of it, there was a practical side of it, and there's everything in between the philosophical conversations that we don't have enough time to address. But again, um, you know, to, to touch on one last thing, I am very much, frankly, in favor if um, improving 90, or sorry, 73rd Street as part of this because apparently, which came out in a conversation that some people are fine with living on gravel roads and unimproved roads, but whatever reasons they have, you know, living on one myself, Nothing beats being able to pull into your driveway on a nice cold day, snow and freezing sidewalks and, and so be it, and not having the issue of getting stuck. I personally had to help three separate people with some of my neighbors get out from a terrible, two terrible ditches and right in front of my driveway. So, you know, and at some point the city of Omaha stops um, grading or putting gravel on these roads. So at some point that's not gonna be done, it's gonna be um, just not feasible anymore. So even if this road is the reason a handful of people moved into this neighborhood, I'm very much willing if, I don't, I certainly don't want to suggest this, but if the city imposes that improvement on me, I'll be more than happy to do it knowing full well it'd be countless of people that would benefit from it, not just me or the, the occupants of this development, um, including those who believe it's okay or um, is the reason they moved to that area because of that street. And um, one last thing, just so that it's clear that there is support. I actually was approached or in a discussion after knocking on doors, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the occupants of the homes I approached actually is very interested in purchasing a home and knows a handful, handful of people that would be interested in purchasing all the rest of the three. If, uh, if they're built. So um, I think one thing 
is necessary to, to convey, which is variety of homes um, that aren't the typical that we're aware of, whether it's large lot living um, or single ranch style homes, whatever the case may be, um, is not the answer for everyone. Again, I'm, I've already taken too much of your time at this point, but there is a necessity for different types of homes for different types of people. And this is an attempt to provide that. You confused me a little bit ago. Yes, sorry. Did you say these these are rentals, correct? This no, no, is no. one lot? This it, it is one lot, so so I will touch on that. It's it was proposed to the city currently as a single lot development because it is permissible. But I actually have three additional lines drawn on that site plan, which um, which in discussion with the city um, saying just to make sure that I am making the provisions provisions now should we um, should we entertain that option? So, sorry, the dotted lines I didn't show quite clearly in the printout, but the previous home is what I was trying to highlight there. So I am trying to make the provisions now for the subdivision into four separate legal parcels so that they are for sale products. But we initially, and that's the only reason I presented it, uh, presented it as a single lot proposal, I was considering owning and operating these, the, the, the buildings as rentals with the option at my discretion or um, for any other reasons outside of my control um, provide for sale products. So it, it finally, or at, at the end of this process, process, it could be for sale products, and, but that is where I am leaning and that's how I presented it to every neighbor um, as, that I spoke with, which is which is why the conversations came up um, with with the individual who said he will be interested in buying um, if they're provided. Okay. All right. Um, did you want to add anything else? Uh, no, no I, I thought he had additional okay. questions. Nope. I'm good. Any yeah. questions from the board? Thank you, Alvin. Eric. Yeah, well, I'll start with where Elvin ended. Um, if if this property is platted, whether that's from one lot to two lots or one lot to four lots, that will bring the requirement of the improvement of 73rd Street for street and sewer infrastructure um, at your cost. So I just want to point that out that I'm not saying it's not possible, but it does bring into um, the conversation um, the whole new dynamic. So something to keep in mind. But specifically for the rezoning as it's pro proposed today, I mean, the whole site is one platted lot from the original platted lot, like Elvin had said, um, 18,000 square feet in size. As I mentioned earlier, master plan supports um, R1 through R5 zoning for low density residential designated properties. Yes, there are, um, there is R1 to the west and to the south. There's also R3 and R4 to the north. There's R5 a little bit off the map um, in your packet. There's LC, CC, GO. So there is a, a wide range of, of zoning in this area. Um, the master plan would consider the proposed R5 zoning as acceptable and that would allow uh, the four townhome units um, attached in one structure that does comply with the site area per unit. And um, for those reasons, staff recommends approval. Okay, so today we would be making a motion based on one lot. Yes, if, if there's any plat, we, we won't do any platting administratively when there's street improvements and sewer improvements. So if there's any plat proposal, that'll have to come back to the planning board and city council. Okay. Do we have a motion or any ad any additional comments or questions? Nope. So do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, um, 
we got a ways to go yet. Does anyone want to take a break or do you want to keep moving on? Keep it going? Okay. Agenda item number 20, KC 11 21 183. Applicant APMA <coughs> request approval of a PUR plan unit redevelopment overlay district. Location southeast of 38th and Farnham Streets. May we hear from the applicant, please? Good afternoon. Uh, Tom McClay, 3814 uh, Farnham Street, Suite 201 here in Omaha. Um, uh, uh, here on uh, APMA as our architects, Allie Pointer, uh, I'm the owner and developer of the, of the project. We actually been here in front of you in relation to this project uh, a few weeks back or maybe a month or so back in regards to tax increment financing. Uh, this is a mixed use project. Uh, that we're underway uh, to construct uh, uh, with a parking garage, retail, as well as multifamily. Um, happy to answer any questions, uh, refresh your recollection on the nature of the project, uh, and I uh, hope you'll support us. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Tom. Any other <laughs> proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the board? Eric has left us. He took a break. He took the break. <laughs> I think he's surprised I'm so brief. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> okay, you're up, bud. Oh, I'm up. Yeah. No opponents. Yeah, it looks like it. Perfect. Um, yeah, you've seen this request uh, yep. for a couple items with rezoning and uh, TIF. Um, I don't think there's anything that I need to point out. Just a couple of waivers incorporated into the PUR, which are floor area ratio, building height, and then um, sidewalk dimension, just a small decrease in a few areas. So um, staff recommends approval of the PUR overlay district subject to submittal of acceptable final PUR plans prior to city council. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, agenda item number 22, case C11-21-184. Applicant 406 Woolworth Ave LLC request appro approval of a PUR plan unit redevelopment overlay district. Location, 406 Woolworth Ave. Is the applicant, is the applicant here? Nope. Nope, okay. We're on a, yeah, agenda item number 22. Oh, okay. I, see, I uh, offered a break and everybody left. <laughs> um, uh, my name is David Burton. Um, I'm a property owner. Uh, address is 14993 Charles Circle. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. Also, just wanted to, um, since it's come up in the other agenda items, just wanted to talk about outreach um, uh, since I know it'll come up. Um, uh, it, I initially reached out to the Neighborhood Association um, in January. Um, we reconnected uh, a bit later. I um, went door to door to the houses within 300 foot radius, knocked on the doors, talked to people when they were there. Um, when they weren't there, I left a leaflet. Um, I had a meeting with, uh, with Mary and Karen, uh, who, were, who kind of uh, co-run the Dalton Neighborhood Association. Um, that was on uh, uh, June 10th. And uh, during that meeting, they made some great suggestions. Um, we're taking those on board, um, things like a uh, dog fence um, and uh, dog waste pickup, because um, I know that's a concern in the neighborhood. Um, there was a, a, a notion to uh, maybe add some more um, asphalt to um, 4th Street um, to widen that. And that's something that I want to bring up with the city at a future meeting. Um, that, that might help uh, uh, snow plows and, and stuff like that get down the street. Um, also on their suggestion, 
um, they, they suggested that I kind of expand the radius a little bit and let more people know. Uh, so I did do that and handed out um, uh, flyers to um, an additional um, kind of 45 uh, houses. So I think the total that I canvassed was about 84. Um, uh, and I've gotten uh, two replies back with those leaflets, so I know they're working. Um, I, t I talked to one uh, woman yesterday. Um, and uh, I, other than that, uh, we're, we're uh, trying to build uh, five townhomes um, in addition to the existing house that's already there. Um, the lot is um, 12,000 square feet within the property lines, so we're um, kind of building less density than I think we could, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's appropriate to the neighborhood. And um, uh, like I said, happy to answer any other questions. Okay, thank you, Dave. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? I'm short. Mary Thompson, 1309 South 6th Street. I'm also president of the Dahlman Neighborhood Association. Um, I'm not going to bore you with what my comments were at your first meeting when I told you what the dissatisfaction that we have in there. I have in my hand a copy of a letter that was uh, distributed to some people in the neighborhood. I was had several people comment and come to my house and say what's going on. We haven't heard about anything about this and why and why. And uh, can, can you stop it? And so the letter says, we are writing you from 406 Walworth to introduce ourselves and let you know that we are planning construction work in the future. We are planning to build five new townhouses, four facing 4th Street and one facing Walworth Avenue. Although an exact start date has not been set, we are aiming to start around September or October 2021. Once started, the construction will take between 12 to 18 months. We love Little Italy. We intend to build with sustainability and to the neighborhood context. The height and material palette of the townhomes will be like other homes nearby. We will have street facing porches, new trees and sidewalks on the property. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at 406 Woolworth. Uh, several of the people that contacted me also reached out to them. And unfortunately, one woman had planned to be here, but she ended up in the emergency room. Um, I'm looking at the situation and uh, the whole project is they want to be affordable housing. I have a question. What is affordable housing? What is affordable housing? We've got affordable housing in that neighborhood. And what about the traffic concerns? We discussed that earlier. And some of the people that I've talked to about this that did not get letters say, what can we do to stop, about, stop this project? Nothing, nothing. Because the city seems to destroy the older neighborhoods, the older established neighborhoods. Little Lee is probably one of the oldest established neighborhoods in the city. And stop and think about it. Would you want this kind of a ho this project in your neighborhood? I was listening to all these other people and projects. Omaha has a history for destroying their architectural history and their neighborhoods and doing things that they think are better for everybody. And unfortunately, I look at this one and I look at some of the projects that are in my neighborhood and I shake my head. My house was built in 1896. I bought it in 1986 as a condemned duplex and I have completely redone it. And then I got a $45,000 increase in my real estate taxes this year because I redid my house 10, 20 years ago. So now I've got other property in this area and I'm trying to figure out what exactly is affordable housing. Can you give me an answer? Can you give me an answer, David? You're gonna have houses that face 4th Street and the street is not wide enough to run the garbage truck down there. They won't have enough room in their green space to throw a cat, let alone a ball. And I feel that they should use either do some redesigning or go move somewhere else. Thank you. Mary, Mary, just Mary, just a second. 
Yes, sir. You said you were the president of the Dahlman Homeowners Association? Neighborhood Association. Neighborhood Association. We don't have a homeowners association. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, do, you, do you personally live within 300 feet of, of this project? No, I live on 6th Street. Okay, and did Dave come to your house? No, he did not come to my house. But did he contact you? He did contact okay. me. Okay, all right. Finally, but he contacted me last fall, and then, uh, and then we did have a meeting, and we explained some of our concerns and everything else. When you say we had a meeting, was that just you and Dave? Karen, or did... Karen Bluvis and myself. Okay, all right. So, and we threw a lot of things at him, and we've got some projects down in that area that are just are not good. And so I didn't. I don't feel we need another project like okay. that. Okay, I got you. it. Thank you, Mary. Any other opponents wishing to speak? Uh, my name is Leroy Bledsoe. <clears throat> I own the property across the street from this on Fourth Street, fourteen uh, seventeen. I own three houses across the street. <clears throat> this is the first I've heard of it. I come up here from Texas to do, to talk about this. My biggest problem, <clears throat> for years, we've had problems with parking. We have, like she said, trouble with getting uh, garbage trucks down the street, uh, emergency vehicles down the street. The street's only 22 feet wide. These these were built over on uh, Woolworth Street, I believe. Well, not Woolworth, but uh, Pacific. There's a 40-foot street over there. Is there any possibility that we can widen this street? I mean, parking has been a, a problem for years here. I mean, we've had accidents, we've had garbage trucks run into vehicles, we've had problems where the emergency vehicles can't get down the street. And if we add this many homes to this street, it's gonna be impossible. I mean, on, the way today economy is, you got five houses coming in here and it's gonna be at least 10 people, you're gonna have 10 more cars coming in. He's allowed for six parking spaces, <clears throat> they're gonna have at least 10, and then they're gonna have company. So that's gonna be, what, 15 more cars coming in? <clears throat> it's got a real problem, we gotta do something with this street if you're gonna put this thing in here. That's my biggest concern is this street. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents? Nope. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Dave, did you want to come back up? Any comments or questions from the board before Dave comes up? Okay. I, I did just want to, uh, David Burton, 14993 Charles Circle. Um, I just wanted to clarify a couple points. Um, uh, Mary had mentioned, um, uh, I, I forget the term, did you use low income? Or affordable. 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 Um, so that's, that's not the case, these are market rate. Um, uh, and um, as, uh, there was a couple other comments I wanted to make uh, with respect to parking. Um, this this was uh, these are these were my meeting notes with uh, with Mary and Karen. Um, this was a concept um, to potentially push some of the cars um, uh, off of Fourth Street and into our property a little bit. That's something I'm open to, and I'm happy uh, to. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a, I'm a soft-spoken soft guy. Um, this was a concept that uh, I, I had drawn up um, uh, it, with Mary and Karen just to see if they thought favorably of it. Um, I didn't really get the reaction of it, but I think there is merit in, in maybe taking, uh, expanding the street a little bit into our, our, uh, um, our lot um, to uh, take some of the cars that would be parallel parked and and uh, leave more space for the drive lane. Um, that's that's one uh, comment um, to the to the gentleman that uh, spoke right before me. Um, the the density um, would match what's what he currently owns across the street. There are, there are five homes um, across Fourth Street in in the same width of. Of, of plot, so I don't think it's um, I don't think it's uh, out of character with the with the neighborhood. Um, the the uh, Mary mentioned the yard. Um, we we are meeting the the uh, impervious requirements for this 
for the site and uh, we're kind of sectioning off this area of the of the lot uh, for a community garden um, as I said we we are um, planning on putting a fence around it for any dogs um, to keep them kind of contained um, and uh, I'm happy to hear other other comments but um, did just want to point out that you know this is a this is an a unique offering for the neighborhood. Um, you, you either have 100-year-old um, houses, um, you've got you've got a few new builds, but um, the majority of the of the new construction in this area are um, very large developments, um, and this offers a you know, kind of a middle ground for people. Um, it densifies the neighborhood. Um, we're adding a quality um, property. I'm I'm um, this is. Develop making is, uh, I'm, I'm new to development. I'm an architect by trade. Um, I, I wouldn't put something out there that didn't kind of meet my own approval. Um, and uh, in, in terms of um, kind of, uh, I think Mary mentioned uh, kind of destroying older neighborhoods or, or kind of doing wrong by older neighborhoods. Um, that, that, that's not the case with this one. Um, the existing house that was there was vacant for three years um, until we bought it. Um, we put a nice family in there with young children um, we are not planning to destroy that house, um, which you know could have been an avenue to, to get more units on the property. Um, so uh, I, I have other uh, single family homes in the neighborhood. I have a lot of um, respect for the neighborhood and I spend a lot of time there um, through um, my architecture work, but then also um, just taking care of my own rentals. I manage them all myself. Um, so uh, I, I think if there was, um, if the project, um, uh, does go forward you can kind of trust that um, that I I care deeply for Little Italy and I kind of only want the best for the neighborhood um, my opinion on what the best what, what is best for the neighborhood might be different from others and and I think that's okay but um, you know in general it's it's kind of in line with I think the the, the city's thinking for um, w w what aligns with uh, what's best so any questions Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks. Eric, I got a question for you. Uh, Leroy came up and said he's down in Texas, but he owns the property across the street. When we send out notices to everybody, does that notice go down to Texas or does it just go, it goes down? It to goes the to the property owner. So All right. it would go to Texas. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Any additional comments, questions from the board? Eric? Yeah, so um, we do have public works here available to answer any questions about the width or potential on-street parking for Fourth Street. Um, so if you if you do want Ryan to come forward to answer any of those questions, uh, he is available. But otherwise, I'll just touch uh, briefly on on the PUR. Um, you know, there are a few you know setback waivers and um, the slight reduction of off-street parking but it is uh, meeting the uh, one parking stall per one unit um, that is customary, that is supportable by city staff and uh, infill parts of town that are redeveloping. You know, there have been a lot of projects here. We've seen Mary here for, for, for many projects. You know, I understand her frustration with um, just change in the neighborhood. And um, part of that is it's a desirable neighborhood, you know, and, and there is, um, a lot of interest in living in, in this area. And I think this is a very good example of, of missing middle housing. You know, we have had a lot of large, large apartment projects, um, but this is nice because it preserves the existing residents, provides five additional units. So, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, I, I, everyone's gonna have different opinions, but, um, you know, so I think city staff and the department's pretty pretty excited about this type of project and um, done so in an appropriate manner in our in our minds. Um, let me see my notes here. Uh, the question about affordable housing. I, I know this is a market rate project, but yeah, that's a that's a big question, and people have differing views. Um, you know, there's going to be different. Um, federal guidelines when you're hitting 30% of AMI, which is area median income, 60%, 80%, some of that's workforce housing. So there's a wide range and that's a, that's a big topic, big conversation, not just here in Omaha, but, a, but nationwide. Um, 
So I just wanted to, to point that out. I know these are market rate, um, but because it was brought up. I don't know if I have um, anything else. Um, we don't need any modifications to the plans. It is acceptable as proposed, so um, our recommendation is for approval. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. A motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item number 24 was on consent for approval taken off. Case C8-21-185, applicant Jeff Anderson. Request approval of a special use permit to allow small group living disabled in the R435 district within 600 feet of an existing small group living use. Location, 6337 North 33rd Street. May you hear from the applicant, please? Yes, sir, I'm Jeff Anderson, the applicant. Uh, my address is 4557 South 176th Ave. Uh, I'm here along with Marcus Polk, our head counselor for the house. Um, we are just here to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Nope. Okay. Any opponents? I'm Ed Bowman. I live at 15527 Parker Street here in Omaha. And uh, I'm not really a pr uh, an opponent of the group home, what I'm primarily concerned about is I'm not sure that house should be rented out to anybody in its present condition. Uh, I have not been inside. I did not uh, uh, trespass on the property, but I live in, or I should say I own the house right next door to it, and I looked at the uh, at the property and took some pictures of it uh, on the day that I uh, received the letter from the planning board. And what I'd like to do is show uh, you people the things that I'm concerned about. And uh, I'm wondering how in the world this property ever got approved for group living. Uh, Can you enlarge that, Ed? Or? I wish I could. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. Click on one of the pictures. Yep. Tap on it. It just seems like it will not. Uh, well, you must be in a. Uh, yes. Oh, wait and a there minute. you go. Hey, I got something. You got something <laughs> going. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, each of you have a sheet in front of you with my notes on it. And uh, this is uh, a uh, picture of the sidewalk leading down from that house. Uh, I think this is the one that I specified as a uh, number eight in my uh, sheet. Yes. This is another view of the crooked steps. No railing on either side of those steps. And if these are handicapped people living here, uh, my concern is this is a lawsuit ready to happen. And uh, I don't know who who checks these group homes for safety. Just a rhetorical question. Something okay. tells me they're not doing their job. We'll get to that. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I lost it again. Sorry. That's all uh, right, Ed. There we go. There you go, Ed. Uh, I don't know if we. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if we need to see. Yeah. We've got your okay. list here, so. Anyway. That was uh, a good picture you showed us on that side. And, walk, I, though. Thank and you. I checked. I checked today. I took this picture 20, uh, June twenty sixth. Uh, I checked today and absolutely nothing has been done. Uh, I think this house needs work, especially if it's rented to 
uh, handicapped people, and uh, I'd like to see that done. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Any other opponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Jeff, did you want to come back down and address Ed's concerns on the condition of the house? First off, the... need your name and address again. Oh, Jeff Anderson, 4557 South 176th Ave. Uh, disabled not in the sense of any kind of physical limitations. Um, the stairs are a concern. We recently bought the house. It's been renovated on the, on the inside, new paint. Um, structurally, there is nothing wrong with the house. We went through... How this all got kick-started was we tried to get a certificate of occupancy. So we had the inspectors come in, and that was not... Uh, on the list. Uh, when the building inspector came in, the only thing that we got tagged on was the need for a uh, special permit uh, for, for use. Uh, the stairs is a concern. There is a plan to get those done. It just has not um, came to fruition yet. Okay. Um, when you say stairs, you're talking the outside I'm side talking the outside there. stairs, correct. Yeah, okay. But that was not on the, <coughs> no, on that, the list. No, that was not on uh, on our inspection okay. but you're going to work to, ed's got quite a few things here um you know re weeds growing in the gutters siding on the right side of the porch um siding. yeah siding i should say yeah okay. siding coming off you're going to you're looking to make those improvements yes and i would yeah. love to have a list um of these concerns as, as well okay That'll probably give you one. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> All right. Did you, need, you. did you want to add anything else, Jeff? No, sir. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Any comments or questions? Eric. Yeah. So um, the state of Nebraska has been making some changes as far as uh, zoning compliance and um, you know, I don't know where that comes into it compared to the certificate of occupancy, certificate of occupancy inspections. This is actually a permitted use when it's small group living disabled, but um, it is within 600 feet of another facility. So in that case, it, it requires the special use permit. Uh, just one one item to point out: the there is no parking on the site. Uh, the residents are not allowed to um, have vehicles, and there's a small parking pad in the alley. Um, that can be utilized by staff or, or street parking, but um, no visitors are allowed. Either. Yep, no visitors as well. So um, staff is supportive of the waiver um, for parking requirements. So that will need to go to zoning board of appeals prior to uh, forwarding this request to city council. Um, all the required information was provided and acceptable. Um, so just only that one item for the parking waiver is is required. Um, so staff is recommend, recommending approval of the special use permit to allow small group living disabled in the R435 district subject to the three conditions in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the special use permit to allow special group living disabled in the R435 district subject to meeting the three qualifications in the uh, staff report. Second. A motion and second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Agenda item number 25, case C8-21-115. C8-21-116. C7-21-117. Applicant, Nebraska Youth Justice Initiative request approval of a special use permit to allow large group living in the R1 district and to allow emergency residential care in the R1 district, along with approval of a conditional use permit to allow secondary education facilities in the R1 district. Location, 5020 Grand Ave. Is the applicant here? Come on forward, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Board, David Levy, Baird Home Law Firm, 1700 Farnham Street, here on behalf of the applicant. With me uh, is Ashley Kuhn uh, of Blair Freeman, the owner's representative. 
Uh, the property on which this facility will locate is about a 10 acre property in an R1 zoning district. Uh, the goal here has been to proceed under the existing zoning. The new facility will be used for the Nebraska Youth Justice Initiative Program at 5020 Grand Avenue, uh, near the intersection of 50th Street and Grand Avenue, uh, comprised of two new buildings totaling approximately 40,000 gross square feet. The new residential building will include 22 uh, separate living units or sleeping units. Uh, with living rooms and meals and cooking facilities as well, areas for group activities, family visits and recreation, administrative offices and a lobby. The second building, roughly 6,500 square feet, will be for outpatient behavioral health clinic services, operating eight to five and sometimes in the evening and on the weekends to provide behavioral health services to the youth residing in the residential building and their families uh, at the facility. Youth receiving services at the facility will not be required to leave the community for education, treatment, or rehabilitation. This is a, a one-stop shop within the community uh, providing comprehensive services in a continuum of care model. From a zoning standpoint, uh, as was mentioned, uh, there are three different uses happening here. Large group living, which is a special use, secondary educational facility, which is a conditional use, uh, and emergency residential services, which is a special use. I've got a few pictures here, and then I would be happy to answer any questions. If they're difficult questions, I'll probably ask Ashley to answer those, uh, <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. So here's an overview of the facility. Uh, as you can see there, here again, this is a very large site. On the right is an existing church uh, that's on the facility that will stay there uh, and be used for complementary programs. The building on the left uh, is the new facility kind of in the middle of the 10 acre site uh, if you look from kind of if you go from from east to west again you can see it's a large site uh, it's already pretty well surrounded with trees this rendering shows the final condition where we've added a lot of trees also around the edge of the perimeter of the site to really uh, you know create a buffer uh, for the neighbors to the south uh, across 50th Street, or I'm sorry, across Grand Avenue is a Walmart uh, and other commercial, commercial facilities. Uh, here's another kind of view from a different direction. And then just a couple to give you an, an idea of the interior of the facility. There's kind of a community room, dining area. And then here is what one of the classrooms will look like. This is a certified accredited uh, school by the state of Nebraska, uh, providing education for the youth who are residing at the facility. Uh, with that, I don't have anything else at the moment. I'm happy to answer any questions uh, if the board has any. I've got a, not a question. Well, go ahead. I'll wait for Ashley to come up, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Kuhn, 4616 Dodge Street. Ashley, I was just reading uh, earlier about you have a team of 15 in-home services staff will work primary off, primarily off-site with families of youth living in the residential building. So you got a staff of 15 that goes out, yep. out to their homes and works with everybody. Yes. Yeah. So the um, goal is to keep the kids in the community so that, you know, historically these have been facilities that have been out of state. So you send a kid out of state and then they come back and they don't have the tools to manage home life or my friends or any of those things. So the yeah. goal of this facility is to keep them where they live so that they can interact with those families on that's a day-to-day awesome. -day basis. I've, I've had some, a friend that's had that and you're exactly right. When they come back, they yeah. don't have, yeah the, yeah, the the skills to handle things. Yes. No, Mr. Good. Chairman, I just add, I, I mean, I think that's a great example of the comprehensive nature of this facility. I mean, that's, that's really the idea. This is really cutting edge and, and groundbreaking in this field to provide the, the comprehensive mm -hmm. services, not just for the youth, but for their families as well, and to do so in the community. Yeah. Hey, Ashley, uh, 40,000 square feet, uh, do you see this expanding at some point? You, you're always gonna keep it at 22? Absolutely. So okay. um, the beauty of this and the rarity of this is the, the, the intimacy of the space, you, right? <coughs> Everybody wants to say, bring 65, because we need that many. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't need to build another facility because we want to keep this so that the kids are getting the services ingrained the way that they need it. Right. And then I, I, I see that there's a, a photo of a fence 
that that is, is that the fence that's going to be built is that uh, that is the fence yeah well I should say we are uh, going to ZBA to get approval for that but that is the fence that we're proposing um, to put around the site okay all right thank you and that fence will border the site on the west side and, and on the north side and then kind of in the middle of the site mm -hmm. but it's not a perimeter in, around the entire 10 acres That's the fence that we want, yes. And it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I want that fence. <laughs> and, and I do want to be clear. I think, uh, Mr. Moore, maybe you asked about a, um, expansion of the facility. Just to be clear, the, the church that's there now will also be used as part of the facility. So that's not expansion per se, but I just want to be Correct. clear that, that that's part of the facility in addition to the 40,000 square feet of new building. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have sent out two letters and a postcard, and then I made calls to anybody that was directly adjacent to the site and left phone calls. We have a neighborhood meeting next Wednesday um, to talk through it. Um, our thought process was <coughs> during COVID, um, especially with the community that we're working in, we wanted to get it to um, a more safe vaccinated standpoint. Um, and so we collected surveys to ask people how they felt, and um, the folks that we talked to asked that we wait until mid-July until um, vaccination numbers were up to have the community meeting. To have the so, meeting. Yeah. And, and, and the meeting, just for the board's information, will be next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Uh huh. Yes, uh, in, the in, in the church at 5020 Grand Avenue. So come if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm just curious, are you guys, is this in any way connected with Boys Town? And then, and this, or not Boys Town, Omaha Homes Boys Town? It is not. It's a brand new standalone. Yeah, brand new initiative has its own executive director who's been working for what a couple of years two years now doing research and and developing this program again it'll be unique and, and really uh, the first of its kind in the country or one of the first of its kind in the yeah. country ashley how, how will you how how do you select the, the people that will will be coming to stay with you and and work with you uh, as far as the students go is that so, uh, a board picks that out or is it um, so it'll process? be a combination of things it'll be a combination of referrals from courts it's meant to kind courts. of be the in-between um, right now kids sit in um, the detention centers as they await um, sentencing Sentence. basically okay. and there's a lot of kids that are waiting that never will intend to go to you know detention but they're sitting there for six to nine months so this is meant to be that in-between the mm. service for Kids like that. Okay, boys very good. Girls. Boys and girls, yes. How, hey. long do, how long do they normally expect them to stay? So the hope is it's around nine to 12 months so that they can get the right amount of care that they need okay. in order okay. to ensure that they don't come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are they allowed to leave the campus? So it, it's kind of on a scale situation. So your hope is by the end of it that they're back in their, their school, going to school on a day-to-day. -day. They're back to staying with family maybe on the weekends and then coming back to the facility. Then coming mm -hmm. back. Okay. Yes. Wow. But day-to-day uh, -day operation, they're not allowed to leave the campus unaccompanied? No. Or? Okay. No. They would not. Yeah. They'll always be with staff wherever they're gotcha. even transporting to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any additional comments, questions? Okay. Just, just a general comment. It's a, it's a uh, great plan. It seems to me like it has a great opportunity for success with immersion like that. Yeah. So. Anything we can do to keep our youth out of detention. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any other proponents <laughs> wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Come forward. Give your name and address, please. Charlotte Abram. Terry Abram. 4916 North 50th Street. And we're not opponents. We just really have some questions. And I think uh, you all have covered some of our questions, but we want to put them on, on record. And, uh, and Ashley did reach out to us. And um, we've been playing text tag, I guess, since then. Yeah. We Charlotte. didn't know about that meeting coming up. Next so Wednesday. maybe some of the neighbors don't know. Okay. And it might be helpful to, to reiterate that meeting coming up. But I guess I, I was also concerned. We were interested in how this uh, particular program 
compares to Omaha Home for Boys, and then if it's like uh, Douglas County Youth Center. Um, and we wanted to know that if these behavioral services are strictly um, for young people who are residents there, or is this something the rest of the community can access in terms of behavioral services? If a parent or someone else in the community uh, needs some help, or is it just for those residents? Um, another one, uh, uh, this kind of ties into what you all said. We wanted to know if this was a court mandated program, or if this was a private placement, or if it was a mixture of both. And if so, how is that accessed if it's a mixture of both? And then the cost to uh, residents if it is uh, open to uh, private placements. And then we also uh, were, sure. what's it, go on. Yeah, you, you talked about number five. Are you allowed to leave campus with or, with or without supervision? If unsupervised, what are the guidelines? And I think you asked that question, I believe. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> And, and then we really were interested in like, m what's the most serious reason why a youth would be placed there, especially if it's court mandated. Um, and, and then um, you, asked, you answered how the existing buildings will be used and um, the fence. <laughs> I was gonna bring up a fence. Um, aesthetically, because it's a neighborhood, we didn't want anything high, anything that looked industrial. Uh, we've got enough industry there already with Walmart that's very commercial, and then we have the home, a, a nursing home on 52nd. Um, so we, you know, we wanna keep a neighborhood feel. So uh, if the fence is, if we'll see it closer and it's aesthetically pleasing, uh, but we really want a neighborhood feel and, and um, hope that we can keep that, so I think I think I've covered all ours. Yeah, there, all the there was another neighbor here, but I think she needed to leave, so, um, and there'll be others there. So, but if we can get notification, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Any other opponents wishing to come forward and speak? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. afternoon. Thanks for waiting around this long. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Gloria Johnson, and this is my husband, Mac, and we live at 5123 North 50th Avenue, which is about 300 uh, feet from this facility that, that's going in. And we have really concerns about it. We are, the neighborhood that we live in is an older neighborhood, you know, older people. Most of us are retired. We, our homes are paid for, and, and we're comfortable. I love the space that I live in, and I don't want a lot, of, no more traffic than what's going on now. We live between Fort, there's traffic all the time, and then there's a park on the other side of Fort where there's a lot of cars. 52nd is a school, there's a lot of cars. Walmart, there's a lot of cars and a lot of young people. Grand Street from 40th back uh, east is a hot spot. Fort Street, I mean, uh, uh, Ames Street is a hot spot. What do you mean by hot spot? Meaning there is a lot of crime that goes on. Oh, okay. A lot of crime. And at night, the helicopter, which is not our neighborhood, because the only time we see a policeman in our neighborhood is when we have crime night out, and we invite the police to our crime night out. That is the only time that we ever see a policeman. You know, and, and which is wonderful, which is wonderful. But because of the hot spots, the helicopters go across all night. So if you intend to uh, go to bed early than 10 to between 10:30 and 11 o'clock, you better be then taking a sleeping pill because most of the time on the weekend, the helicopter copter is going backwards and forward. You know, right. and so we just want to make sure that the facility is going in, that's going to be there is not going to create more havoc than what's already there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, we received one uh, a, a letter from them, from this organization that is going in, and they said that they wanted to talk to us about input. So I emailed them 
that I was concerned. And then the next thing I got was a letter saying that the meeting is today. Now, I haven't had any input in it, you know, and the only thing that I heard is what these, uh, uh, this young lady and this gentleman was saying today about it. And I think that if we're going, if this is going to be in our neighborhood, then we should have some input in it and we should know what's going on. I think it's only right no. and it's only fair. Will you be attending that meeting? I didn't know about the meeting next until today. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. One I, of the I things, think that's when it one is. One of the things our neighborhood worry about mostly is, is safety. I'm, I'm strictly, I'm concerned about safety. I'd be honest about Mac. Yeah, Mac. Yeah. I got a kick out of you go to bed early at, you want to go to bed early at 10 or 11? My wife goes to bed at 8. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. She so, gets up at 4. <laughs> So I, I think that there should be more. I mean, I, I can't make a decision, but I'd like to be part of the, the decision that's going to be made, that there'll be more talk about this to, so we'll know exactly what's going on, exactly how it's going to be built. You know, we should, I mean, since we've been living there for 30-some years, I think we should have some input in it. Amen? <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. <laughs> Any other opponents wishing to speak? Okay, seeing none, I'll close public hearing. Ashley? I'm, back. I'm calling <laughs> Ashley because she seems to be the. No. Exactly. <laughs> You're just the window. You I do to just want to make. That's right. That's Ashley, right. you got to give your name and address again. Ashley Kuhn, 4616 Dodge Street. I do just want to address directly. When we were approached about this project, my company, we were very adamant that the neighbors' voices be heard and that we take into consideration everyone that lives around the site. And I've done everything I can to try to call and reach out and let everybody know that those voices are still very important to us. And so our goal was to first make sure that the zoning was gonna be approved and the project was a thing. And then we'll start to talk to the neighbors about what you wanna see. Is it that you want more trees? Is it that you want a different fence? How do you, what materials do you wanna see? Things of that nature. But just know in front of all of planning that that is how our company works and we would not have taken this project if that wasn't what was gonna happen. And so I will call again to make sure everybody knows about that meeting. I'll send staff around the neighborhood to make sure that everybody knows that that meeting is happening next Wednesday. Um, do you want me to address all the lists now that you had, or do you want me to do that on Wednesday? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Just in the future, Ashley, to flip that, if you could have had your meeting. Yes. Uh, I know you're worried about vaccinations and everything. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But we, you are going to have a meeting. And Absolutely. It's, Several it's coming, of them, actually. Yeah. This, uh, a week from today. A yeah. week from today will be the first one. There'll be more of them because, okay. like we said, it's it's a community thing. We want to make sure that the site gets built so that the neighbors are happy with what they see. Okay. Is that all right with you? It, to, can she answer your questions at the meeting? With the 14th. Tell them, mm -hmm. tell them when you walk out with them. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Meet up with everybody. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. Did you want to add any more? That's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Any additional comments or questions from the board? Eric? Yeah, so obviously there are a lot of items uh, in the recommendation report and in the operations plan and the submittal. Um, you know, we went over it in, in a lot of detail in the, in the pre-meeting, so I won't, you know, reiterate um, that there, um, just to clarify, there this will need to be approved by city council okay so this is a recommendation from uh, both the planning department to the planning board and then the planning board's vote is also a recommendation to city council who ultimately has the authority on two of the three use permits so just wanted to make sure that's clear and we don't know when that city council date will be um, it depends on on some of the criteria if we need plans that need to be modified before it goes but um, you know, we will send notifications within 300 feet again when the council date has been established or the city clerk's office will send it. Uh, but we would also expect the development team to keep you apprised of those dates as well. Um, so just process wise, this, this isn't the final, it's, it's kind, of the, kind of the start of, of a lot of the, the steps. Um, 
just one item there uh, there's a currently a dead end street on the east portion of the site applicant and development team will need to coordinate with public works on uh, the proper vacation process of of that right away as well as constructing that private street to city standards uh, there was some conversations about the fence we do have some uh, recommendations to pull that fence back a little bit and add some landscaping on the outside to help um, lessen the impact of, of the height of that fence so um, we'll need to continue to coordinate with uh, the development team on uh, what that final landscape plan looks like before City Council I don't have much more than that we do have two parts uh, to the recommendation because we have three use permits so two of them are together um, so I'll, I'll read uh, Jennifer do, when we have two special use permits and then we have a separate conditional should we can it all be one vote or should we take separate probably separate votes on even though it's one agenda item use permits or recommendations and the conditional is final yep perfect okay so for the first part this will be for the special use permit to allow um, well staff recommends approval of the special use permit to allow large group living and emergency residential care in the R1 district subject to the 12 conditions in the report and if you have questions or follow-up you can definitely ask that okay. I just want to put that on the record thank you just now before we make a motion that um, they've already testified that they're going to have this public hearing or the meeting with the neighborhoods if you will and I, I think that's an important thing we've as we've said before and I'm glad that you're passionate about that as well and so I won't include that in the mandate um, so I'll uh, I'm make a motion to approve the special use permit to allow large group living and emergency residential care in the R1 district subject to the 12 conditions of the staff report prior prior to submittal to the uh, City Council Second. A uh, motion and a second. <coughs> Lisa, will you please record the vote? Rose Hacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. And staff recommends approval of a conditional use permit to allow secondary education facilities in the R1 district subject to the 12 conditions in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? Motion. To allow secondary education facilities in the R1 district subject to the 12 conditions in the recommendation report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you please record the vote? Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rose Hacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Okay, agenda item number 29, case C7-20-57. Applicant, new singular wireless PCS LLC request approval of a major amendment to a conditional use permit to allow a broadcast tower in the GI district with the waiver of section 55-506 height to, a, to allow a 150 foot monopole. Portions of the property is located within the floodway overlay district. Location, northeast of 28th and Clay Streets formerly northeast of 28th and Greeby Streets. Is the applicant here? Good afternoon. Uh, Steve Ward, Ward Development, 15 Park Place, Swansea, Illinois. I'm here to answer any questions or concerns. Um, I do want to say this is a, a proposal that has come before the board before it's on property owned by Metropolitan Utility District. Upon review of the final survey, it was decided by MUD that they needed that property for some storage of some materials. They asked us to move the site about 50 feet, which we've done. So we're back to amend that conditional use permit. Thank you. Hey, Steve, before you leave, just a real quick question. In the report, it says with a 150 foot tower, the maximum fall zone radius would be 75 feet. What do you mean by 75 feet maximum fall Tip zone? Uh, typically with a uh, self support tower or a monopole type tower, they, are, they don't fall out of the ground. They don't tip over and pull out by their anchor bolts. There's a weak point about the midpoint of the tower. So it bends like a soda straw. So a 150 foot tower would basically kink at the, at the midpoint 
And if it would break at that midpoint, then it would tip and go 75 feet. Thank you. I and needed that clarification. And there's no structures within that 75 feet area of the tower. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? My name is Jerry Katsky. I'm with K&K &K Law here in Omaha. I represent Christopher Ansell, who is a property owner in the area within 300 feet. Actually, with this tower going up, the 75 feet. Did you give your address? I'm sorry, 103, 106, 75 Bedford Avenue. Okay, thank you. The 75 foot potential break would crash into his bedroom. Uh, aside from that, Mr. Ansell has been subjected to um, terrible headaches, migraine headaches, for years. And he is terribly concerned about the fact of having uh, these kind of emissions going out that close to his home and uh, exacerbating the condition that he presently has. Now, I asked him to get something from a doctor. He got something from a nurse practitioner because his doctor is out of town and we'd like additional time to submit that report from his doctor as to what she may see as potential hazards for this individual living in that close proximity to uh, this tower. Uh, I'd like Mr. Ansell to come up and answer any specific questions and to address you as to his particular concerns. Hey, Christopher Ansell, 8623 North 28th Avenue. Both my home and my business are located right next to where this tower is to be placed. Um, I've lived there since 2007. I've made drastic improvements to my property. Um, on top of any health concerns, this obviously is not good being right next door. Um, but more than anything, I'm concerned because I've made this a home for my family and my business. And um, health-wise, if this thing goes up, I can't live in my own house. I just, I, I am too sensitive to that. Even when the barometric pressure changes, I'm in bed all day in a dark room. Um, I have a medical history this thick, multiple hospitalizations. Um, I understand these towers need to go up. There's a need for them. I just don't understand why it needs to be so close right to me. Um, and I, I guess I don't know what else to say here. to a tower where it really starts to affect you? Do you know? I wouldn't know exactly, but at least a two, 300 feet would be fine. But I'm right next door to this. Because I did receive a letter before when, about this tower going down on Greeby Street, but it was far enough down the street that I thought, well, this probably would not present a concern to me. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Any other opponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, close public hearing. Steve, did you want to come up and address any concerns? I can, just a little bit of history. Um, at and is already at the MUD facility. Um, we were on a rooftop at what they call the chemical building. Um, MUD had decided to do an extensive rehabilitation of that building and asked us to relocate. We're on a temporary pole on Gravy Street. Currently, it's a wooden pole where we moved our antennas to allow their construction. We then came to the board to see if we could turn that temporary site into a permanent site. And that was within the 300-foot setback of residential. Um, and we said we'd come back and look to see if MUD had any other properties that we could lease. That led us to the property that we zoned 50 feet away from this. Um, 
so there is a history there. As far as the setbacks, it's on our site plan. I believe it's over 80 feet um, from, the, from the house. Um, also, as to health effects, all I can say is that we operate within the parameters of the FCC license. Everyone's free to uh, go to the FCC.gov um, website and see how we comply with those. We comply with our frequencies and our power emissions, and it's all governed by the FCC. We're limited in how much power we can emit from a cell tower, and we're in compliance with all those regulations. Okay, thank you. Any additional comments or questions? Eric. Steve, if I could ask a question of you. Sure. I don't usually ask questions, but um, so we do have a recommendation for denial. Um, are, you, are you aware of that? No, I did okay. not see any, okay. any sitting in before I came. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we are recommending denial. We, we're concerned about, um, yes, although the residential structure, I think we have noted in the recommendation report, is 83 feet uh, to the south to the actual residence, but to the property line is, is 40 feet from the base of the tower. Uh, well within that fall zone. So we were concerned about that proximity, um, feeling that is uh, too close. I know the, the property is zone GI, so so yeah, as Steve had mentioned, um, we had started out with the Greeby, it was, you know, I think that was laid over, or, or we had modified, uh, or the request was modified, then it moved up to um, just north of where the current, um, where the previously approved site was, was further to the north of what's being proposed today. So. We didn't talk. No, um, keep going. I, I so, was just. Um, I guess so. We we have concerns about the proximity in the fall zone to that adjacent property. Even though it is zone GI, um, there still is a residence there that um, should be recognized. And then also the the no landscaping being um, proposed. And I think a lot of these concerns are are from MUD. And um, so I guess but my question to you, Steve, is. I know that MUD is, is applying some of the criteria to you. Mm -hmm. um, if this were to be denied, I mean, are you able to, to still build at the original site that was approved, or is that going back to the conversations with MUD, or where I, would you I, stand I, on that? I'd really have to take that back to MUD and, and ask them. Um, they were concerned about their future use mm -hmm. you know, of that area. Um, I could go back, certainly go back to them and ask. You know, we're unaware of any in the ordinance, per se, any setback requirements for fall zones, but I understand the concern and, and the thought behind that. It's not a code issue, but it's a it's a concern issue. So I'd be happy to take that back to MUD. Yeah, and do you know, it, maybe you can't speak for them, but their concerns about landscaping around the equipment, I mean. Yeah, um, their concern, if you look at, if you know that site and that whole perimeter around Pershing and 26th and 28th streets is they don't want anything to block the view. They have a severe concern of someone getting over that fence, hiding behind landscaping, and maybe doing damage to the treatment system or to the water supply. They have very tight security with cameras, video, guards, and they say they do not want something that someone can get in behind and they can't see. Well, I believe those are federally mandated requirements for the point. And we did provide a letter from their security system that's asked for the relief from the landscaping. You know, we offered to, can we just put up a site through fence, you know, instead of having trees, can, is there something we can do? And they said no, because we can't, we have to be able to see through it with the cameras. And they're also dictating to you where you can put that pole is what is why you're... Well, they, they just said they wanted that area, they thought it was more towards the side instead of in the middle of, their, that, of that lot. And my understanding is they use that lot for storage of materials. I think they put some of their insulators out there in the, in the summertime. And they just didn't want to have that in the middle of the property. Like I said, I can go back and see if we could shift it and back away. Perfect. We have no problem with that. It works from a radio perspective, obviously. It's just a landlord situation. Yeah, it, it, we say in the report, I mean, if, you know, if it was set back further, maybe the landscaping can be, can be discussed. I guess our greatest concern is the proximity to the adjacent property. So. Um, you know, we are acknowledging that, it, it, to me, it, it feels like, you know, M MUD is creating all these criteria, and I, I totally understand, you know, they have a facility they need to secure. Um, 
but also part of it is the city, you know, that just doesn't mean we should just disregard, you know, our criteria and regulations as well. So um, we are recommending denial, um, acknowledging that we do have an approved location that the that it can still be, be or still be built upon. Um, so I don't have any further questions for you, Steve, but um, that's where we stand. Okay. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Morris? Yes. Uh, sorry. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion uh, to deny is approved. Okay. Okay. Sir, what case were you here for? Yeah, that was on the uh, uh, consent agenda. Okay. And that was, sorry. You've been sitting. What's that? Are you with the church? I'm with the church. Well, the good news is you were approved. Oh, okay. You were approved. <laughs> the bad news is you sat here. You for, sat here for three hours. <laughs> this has been very interesting. I've never been to this operation before. And probably don't want to again. Come down next month. I know we're, we're all interesting. Eric's not, correct? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. I saw you sitting there, and I thought, we're getting down to the end here. So. Okay. Do we have a motion on last month's pre-meeting minutes? I have a motion and a second. Lisa, will you record the vote, please? Moore? Yes. Congo? Where'd he, where'd he go? I think we lost him. Should have taken that break. Okay, we're going to go with that. He must have to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rose Hacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Do we have a motion on last month's public meeting motion minutes? Public meeting minutes? Second. Motion and a second. Lisa, you record the vote. Uh, Sotolongo? Still not here. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Morris? Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Do we have a motion for adjournment? Motion adjourned. We have a motion and a second, Lisa. Can you record the vote? Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Uh, yes. We had to go. Didn't Morris? God, I had to go so bad. <laughs> Moore? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Motion approved. Uh, adjourned 417.